Hi, I'm Ashley Victoria Robinson here on behalf of the amazing DC Comics fan channel to bring you the Hanna-Barbera Reading Club. Yes, I will be here every month giving you the lowdown on the Future Quest series. And today I am here to give you a review, recap, and Easter eggs from Future Quest number one. Future Quest number one is, of course, written by the amazing Jeff Parker with art by Doc Shainer and Steve the Dude Rude with Jordi Belair on colors just killing it. So here's a quick recap of what happens during the first issue. We start out on a distant world years before and we see a bunch of cool aliens, some of whom look like humans and some of whom don't, basically getting their butts handed to them and exploding stuff. Cut to the Florida Everglades and more or less the future we meet Johnny and his adopted brother Haji flying around on jetpacks. They are being watched over by Race and their doggy Bandit until something crazy happens. Back at Dr. Benton Quest Lab, we meet a couple secret agents. We meet Ray himself and his trusty eagle Avenger. And then we also meet Deva Sumati. They talk to the doctor about what he's currently working on until something goes awry. Cut back to Johnny and Haji and we see a very scary looking ship coming after them and Dr. Zinn's battle drones are ejecting and growing their spider-like legs and throwing everybody out of the sky. The boys are forced to crash land in the Florida Everglades where they meet up with Ty, his magical boat, and his cat and they make a getaway before everything gets a little too crazy. There's a look behind the scenes at Dr. Zinn and his head henchwoman and we get a little peek at what his plan is going to be throughout this run. Back at Dr. Benton Quest lab, Birdman proves that he is the hero of the modern age calling Avenger to his side and taking off to save the children. All three boys seem to have made a clean getaway when suddenly they are confronted on the final page. <laughs> this was a spectacular first issue. All it had to do was be cool and kind of retro and it did that in spades. Jeff Parker has an excellent sense of who Johnny Quest and the people in his world are and what are the most interesting aspects to bring into the modern age. It feels a little bit timeless. You're not quite sure yet if this is set in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, 90s or the awesomeness of today, but it could easily fit in any of those places, which is a quality that I think will lend itself to a broad audience of readers and speaks very highly of the book. Doc Shainer and Steve Rude have an Alex Toth inspired style that carries throughout the book. It's just stunning guys. I mean look at some of these pages of art. How cute are the boys? How amazing are these space scenes? And how phenomenally exciting are these action sequences? Seriously, Future Quest 1 is so good. It sets up all of the characters very easily through very simple exposition and two huge mysteries carrying forward. How about I lay down some Easter eggs for you, huh? I know you guys want that. Johnny and Haji are of course two leads from the Johnny Quest cartoon, although I will say that Haji's character has been updated and given a lot more to do. We see Bandit, their trusty dog, who was of course a mainstay of the cartoon, as well as Roger T. Race Bannon, who was a special agent and bodyguard and a pilot from Intelligence One. Following the death of Dr. Quest's wife, he got hired on to protect Johnny and Haji and eventually became their tutor. Not that long into it, we meet some Easter eggs from a cartoon called Birdman and the Galaxy Trio that aired in 1967. It was of course a Hanna-Barbera cartoon and designed by the amazing Alex Toth. You may recognize from some retro covers in the DC universe. This series is the one that inspired the Harvey Birdman cartoon on Adult Swim that many of us are a fan of. His real name is Ray Randall. He is Birdman, a man endowed with the powers of the sun god Ra. Avenger also appears in the comic, who is his trusty eagle sidekick, and they mention Falcon 7. Falcon 7 was Birdman's contact at Internation, the company that he works for, who famously wore an eye patch. Now, Deva Sumadri is not necessarily a character from any of the previous Hanna-Barbera series, but with this hairstyle, she does kind of look like Gravity Girl from the Galaxy Trio, the same cartoon that Birdman is from. In this issue, we also meet Dr. Zinn, who is, of course, the sworn arch enemy of Dr. Quest. He also appeared in the Venture Brothers cartoon, along with his famous battle drones that we see attacking Johnny and Haji toward the end of this issue. There are many vortexes that the quests are after throughout this issue, and we do get to see some peeks into the series' future, including a look at Bird Boy, which may herald an interesting change in Johnny's future. On the cover and in the interior, we get a brief look at the Herculoids, which were also designed by Alex Toth. Based on the Hanna-Barbera cartoon from 1967, they are aliens from the planet Amzot, which I'm very much hoping that we get a chance to see. 
Future Quest number one is a non-stop adventure, a ton of cool Easter eggs, and a super fun read. It is an excellent choice for your entire family, and I hope that you are as excited as I am to see this series going forward. Don't forget to watch all the other Hanna-Barbera book club videos that will be coming out over the course of the month, and to join us when we do our combined events. If you want to see more from me, Ashley Victoria Robinson, you can check me out right here on Jowen's YouTube channel, where I have nerdy content coming out every week. Thank you so much for watching. Pick up Future Quest number one, support the creators, support DC Comics, support my reading of them and your own. You are all the best, my friends, for watching. I have been Ashley Victoria Robinson. Be safe and make good choices, Future Quests.